Okay. So on either your first page of notes or your second page of notes, I don't care which one, somewhere where you're going to look back at this and study because this will be on your quiz on Wednesday and I just want to make sure that we have the correct information. Um, so on your quiz on Wednesday, you're gonna have two questions, one on the law of segregation and one on the law of independent assortment. Yes. Up here, in the box. So on that page, wherever you are, whatever you're going to see it later, I want you to write down this for the law of segregation. So the law of segregation, what it says is, is that during meiosis, when your cells are separating, your chromosomes are separating, which means that your alleles on those chromosomes, your traits, your alleles, all of the things, they're all separating. And the law of segregation says that they are going to separate equally. So what that means is that you are going to get one from your one parent and one from the other parent equally, okay? So one allele comes from mom, one allele comes from dad. That is the law of separation. Now usually, you will see the law of segregation, sorry, segregation, not separation, same thing though. The law of segregation when you are dealing with monohybrid crosses. And if you remember, monohybrid crosses deal with one trait. So usually when you have one trait, you have two alleles for that one trait. One allele comes from mom, one allele comes from dad. That is the law of segregation that you are not going to get both of your alleles from one parent, you are going to get one allele from each of your two parents. Okay? And you usually see them, you can see them in all of your different types of crosses. So you, we, we talked about monohybrid and dihybrid crosses. So you will see them all the time because your alleles are separating, but the easiest way to see it is in a monohybrid cross. And when you're just dealing with one trait, it's really easy to see the law of segregation. Those alleles are going to segregate, are going to separate, and you're going to get one from mom, one from dad. So the law of segregation states that the parental genes must separate randomly and equally into gametes during meiosis, so there is an equal chance of the offspring inheriting either allele. You do not get two alleles from one parent. You get one allele from each of your two parents. So that is law of segregation. The other one that we need to revisit is the law of independent assortment. So for law of independent assortment, you are going to write down this, that the law of independent assortment says that the alleles from parents are passed on independently to the offspring. So that means independently of each other. So you have multiple chromosomes lining up in your cells, when they go to line up, 
they are lining up independently of each other. So they are not worried about where the other chromosomes are and how the other chromosomes are going to line up. They're just going to pick a random spot to line up and that's where they're gonna be. And that random spot is going to be different or can be different every time that cell goes to divide. Sammy, are you writing this down? So that is independent assortment, that your chromosomes, when they go to assort themselves, they're going to assort themselves independently of each other. So that means they're just going to pick a random spot somewhere in the middle of that cell, and then they're gonna separate. That random spot that they pick is going to be different every time. So every time you have that cell splitting, that chromosome for that trait is gonna find a different spot to, to uh, go line up at. Okay. So what that looks like is this. So most of the time you will see independent assortment during your dihybrid crosses. So independent assortment is right here. You see those during your dihybrid crosses when you're dealing with your uh, two traits, okay? So this is why we have such diversity, especially in our dihybrid crosses. We have so many different options and so many different, we only have four options. Anyway, we have more diversity in our dihybrid cross because when we're dealing with two, two traits, we're dealing with multiple chromosomes those chromosomes are gonna line up independently of each other. So notice how these two, the blue one, the blues are on the left, the reds are on the white, the right. Here, so these are the same parents, right? They're both heterozygous, so they have the same information. But here, instead of lining up like this parent, this one now is gonna have them opposite. So blue, red, red, blue. So this shows you that your chromosomes are not going to always line up the same way, and they're not going to always line up according to other chromosomes, okay? So, is this making sense? You're gonna have two questions on your quiz about law of segregation and law of independent assortment, and I don't want you to get them wrong. So please let me know if this does not make sense, and I will reiterate it. Is everyone good on these two things? So you're gonna do good on those two questions on your quiz. Okay. Your, wait, what? Or is the stuff you start with? It's not the answer on the quiz, but the answers will have, like one answer will have about, a, like your law of segregation question will have a monohybrid, a monohybrid picture. And then your law of your independent assortment question will talk about a dihybrid cross. So yes, but no? Yeah. Okay. All right, so did I, Moving on, did I, did we finish this worksheet? We finished all of that and we talked about blood types. So we had, so we talked about incomplete dominance and co-dominance. So incomplete dominance, you have the blend of two, right, let me see, this is on the video, hold on. Sorry, nope, it's not. All right, so incomplete dominance, you have a blending of two things. So you have a red and a white colored parent making a pink or purple or whatever color offspring. It is a blend between the two. It is a new cohesive color, all right? Co-dominance is you have dominant traits again, but now instead of it being a blend between the two, now you're going to see 
both of those dominant traits at the same time. So if you have a red and a white parent, instead of getting a pink offspring, what you're going to get for co-dominance is you're gonna get a red and white spotted offspring. Um, another example of that co-dominance, another example are your blood types. So your blood types are all co-dominance. You have your A, your capital A, and your capital B being seen at the same time. And if you don't see either of those, then you have your O type. So remember, if you are an A type, you could have capital I, capital A, capital I, capital A. So for some reason for blood types, they use capital I's and lowercase i's. So for type A, we could have our homozygous type A, which is capital A, capital A, or we could have our heterozygous A, which is capital A, lowercase i. And then for type B, we can have two capital B's, or we can have a capital B and a lowercase i. And then if we are type AB, then we have both capital A and capital B. And then we have I, if we have type O, then it's two lowercase i's. So everyone remembers how to write blood types, yes? Okay, and you remember the difference between incomplete and codominance. Either a blend or you see the two traits at the same time. We're good? Okay, so did we finish this? Did we do the baby being switched at the hospital? Yeah. And is it parent or not? I think we started it, but the bell was gonna ring, and so I told you to finish it on your own. We were finishing the bell, like the E part. Like yes, final okay, part. so let's just revisit this one. Okay, so if you have a mother that is type O, what would her genotype be if she's type O? Lowercase i, lowercase i. And if the father is a B, what would his genotype be? Capital I, capital A, capital I, capital B. And then if the baby is type B, what are the two options for being type B? Yes, so you can either be homozygous B, so that's two capital Bs, or you can be heterozygous B, which is one capital B and a lowercase i. So then we want to see, we want to draw the Punnett square and see what are the possible genotypes, and we want to see if this baby was switched at birth or not. So then you have the mother, you can put the mother on top or the mother on the side, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put her on the top. And then the father, you have... A and B. So then what are what's your possible genotype for this one? All right. So those are your four possibilities. So that baby has a possibility, has a different What am I trying to say? Probability. So that baby has a probability of either being a heterozygous type A or a heterozygous type B. So is this, was this baby switched? No, probably not. Because, why? If the, baby, if the baby is type B, it could have one of these. Well, what was our probability? This one. So it probably has this type of blood type because it's 50% type A, 50% type B. So, no, that baby was not switched. That is the baby of those parents, okay? Now, if that baby was type O, if this baby is type O, would that baby have been switched? Yes. Yes, that baby would have been switched because there's no way, if you have these two crosses, there's no way that you're going to get a type O offspring. That makes sense? Okay, so now we're done with that one. So now I have number, so this was number four in your notebook. The Achieve 3000 assignment that we did yesterday, that's number five. So in your notebook, you can either write Achieve 3000 did online, or you can just skip it all together. I really don't care, okay? So number four was here. Number five was the Achieve 3000. So now I'm gonna give you number six.
And then the rest of them you should be able to finish on your own. a blend of the two traits coming together to make a one cohesive new trait or we're going to see both of those traits on the same organism at the same time so number one in a chestnut horse their coat or hair color can be reddish brown light red slash pink and creamy white fill in the Punnett squares uh, fill in the Punnett square and determine the expected genotypes and phenotypes from crossing heterozygous and heterozygous parents all right, so first of all, let's figure out what letters we're going to choose for our colors. So we have reddish brown, light red slash pink, and creamy white. So what two letters, we only have two letters, what two letters should we use? Uh, B. B. H. H. For hair. But, so you're looking at the colors. So you could use H, but that doesn't tell you the Color, so you could brown. How about we? Okay, how about we use red? C. Red is brown. How about we use R for red? And then if you have light red slash pink and creamy white, what would you use for this one? No, w. W. <laughs> it honestly really doesn't matter, but the one that does matter is this color. So what would you use for this color? Are you going to use a separate letter or are you going to use a combination of the two dominant because we're talking about incomplete and co-dominance? A combination. So what is your, what's this color going to be? RW. RW. That's what is the important thing. So if we have, guys, if we have a reddish brown and a creamy white, and a light red or slash pink, what type of dominance is this? Is it incomplete or is it co-dominance? Why is it incomplete? Because it is a blend. You have a light red slash pink. You have a reddish brown and a white coming together to make a pink. That is incomplete. That is a blend of two things. So this is incomplete. If it was codominant, what type of coloring would you see if it was codominant? Yes, red, Renee. Red, brown, and it would be red, brown, and white, and it would be like spots or blotches, right? So it would be reddish brown and white at the same time. That would be codominance. That's not what we have. We have a light pink or a red. We have one cohesive new color being blended from the two parental colors. Does everyone see how it's incomplete dominance? Okay, so now what are the, so you could have used the H for hair color and it would be that for white, this for red, and then your pink would be this. So either one, you could either do this or you could just use the letters. Okay, so if we have two heterozygous parents, what are the genotypes of our parents? If we're just using, just use the letters, don't, don't use these. What would a heterozygous parent be? It would be RW because remember heterozygous means that you have, is it the same or you have different? 
Heterozygous means different. So you're going to have different letters. We are talking about incomplete and codominance. So both of your letters are capital. So then you have RW on the top and you have RW on the side. So then what would this possible genotype be? Uh, capital R, capital R. What would this one be? RW. What about someone other than John Aldi? What is this one? RW. Thank you. And WW. Thank you. Walk in. All right. So then, what are my possible genotypes for my offspring? What are my possible genotypes? R R R W and W W. So what are those possible phenotypes? Red brown. What's the second one? The, yeah, I'm just going to say pink, whatever. And then what's the third one? Creamy white. White. Now, I know it doesn't ask you, but I could ask you on the test, what is the probability of each of those phenotypes? So what is the, the probability of a offspring being red-brown? 25%. What about pink? 50%. And white? 25%. Very good. Okay. All right. So then the back. So the back is mainly talking about um, blood types. So let's do one of those together. And then I will leave you to finish this on your own. Because you should be able to finish this entire worksheet on your own as of right now. All right, so blood types A and B are dominant over O. Fill in the Punnett square and determine the expected genotypes and phenotypes of crossing a person who has a heterotype, heterozygous type B and a person with heterozygous type A. So what is our heterozygous type B? How would I write that genotype? Capital I. What is it? capital B, and then what's the second part of that genotype? Lowercase I. Lower I. So that's our heterozygous type B parent. What about a heterozygous type A parent? What would that look like? So heterozygous, is that the same or is that different? Different. So you have to have the A, so you have to have that, and then lowercase I because it's heterozygous. All right. So now you're going to cross those two. And you're going to tell me what are my genotypes? Capital I A, capital I B. Capital, capital I A, lowercase I. Uh, capital I B, lowercase I. Capital, lowercase I, lowercase I. Okay. So what are my possible genotypes? Uh, I, 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 All four of them, right? Yeah. So if I have those possible genotypes, what are my possible phenotypes? What is this phenotype? Uh, a, B. A, B. What is this phenotype? Heterozygous A. So just A. Heterozygous B. So just B. And then O. And then O. And then what are the probability of each of those? 20. They're all 25%. Very good. And then if we're talking about blood types, and we're talking about A and B and O, is that incomplete or is that codominance? Codominance. So anytime you see a blood type question, and if it asks you, what type of dominance it is, blood types will always be codominance because you have antigens on your red blood cells. You have antigens of A and antigens of B. 
So if you are a blood type AB, then you will see both antigens for both A and B at the same time. If you don't have any of those antigens, then you don't see any of that, then you have type O. But if you have type AB, because AB is an option, and that option is co-dominant, so both of those A's and both of those B's are seen at the same time, that is why blood types under, that's why blood types are co-dominant examples. So anytime you see blood type questions, think co-dominance, okay? Okay, so you finish this worksheet. I will post the key on Canvas later, but you are finishing this worksheet.